Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about scholarship opportunities and admission processes in continental Europe. My name is Ibrahim Jibrila and I'm from Sokoto. Uh, currently I'm doing my PhD in animal breeding at Wageningen University in the city of Wageningen in the Netherlands. And of course, this is an Ariwa Youth Mentorship Program. Here I show you the area known as continental Europe. It's what you see in green. And when I zoom in, you see it more clearly. You see the countries with their borders. Uh, yeah, the area is not strictly defined. So uh, you might find some maps that are a little bit different from this, including some other countries or excluding some countries, yeah. But uh, the most important feature of what is called continental or mainland Europe is that the big islands of the United Kingdom, the Republic of Ireland and uh, Iceland as a country are always excluded. And yeah, uh, countries like uh, Russia and Turkey uh, are also included, although these countries are also considered part of Asia. So they are parts of uh, both the continent of Europe and the continent of Asia. Anyway, this is uh, the detail that is very important here. Um, as far as uh, Nigerian students wanting to study in Europe are concerned, uh, the main feature of continental Europe is that uh, these countries uh, uh, are non-native English speakers. So yeah, uh, although some of them uh, have their postgraduate programs in English, and some of them actually even undergraduate programs, uh, uh, English is not their main language. What are the scholarship opportunities available for Nigerians in these countries? Well, most uh, European countries actually have scholarships for Nigerians. Uh, uh, because uh, they have scholarships for students from developing countries, and Nigeria is uh, a developing country, then it means they have scholarships for Nigerians. And uh, these scholarships can be roughly categorized into four categories. Uh, I'll mention the categories here and then later uh, take them one by one and give some details. Uh, the first category are those uh, scholarships offered by the individual European countries and administered by Nigerian government through what is called bilateral education agreement. The second category are those scholarships offered by the European Union and administered by various consortia. The third category are those scholarships administered directly by the individual European countries. And the last but not the least category are those scholarships offered and administered by individual universities. So I start with uh, BEA scholarships. Um, particularly uh, Russia, Turkey, Hungary, Ukraine, Romania, and Serbia have scholarships for Nigerians. And they administer these scholarships to the Nigerian government, mainly through the Federal Scholarship Board. And these scholarships are called bilateral education agreement scholarships. Um, I think they are called bilateral education agreement because uh, uh, it's a bilateral stuff. So Nigeria sends uh, her students to these countries and each of these countries also are supposed to send their students to Nigeria. That's by the way. Uh, these scholarships are available for undergraduate MSc and PhD programs. And um, usually the Federal Scholarship Board um, makes announcements of these scholarships towards the end of the year, so November, December, and then people apply. I think applications are now online. And then uh, yeah, uh, at the beginning of New Year, they call for people to come and they screen their credentials and interview them. And then, yeah, subsequently the winners are selected. Uh, when someone is selected for one of these scholarships, they don't need to apply for admission themselves. So uh, the countries that uh, uh, offer the scholarships are the ones to 
list the candidates into the uh, relevant universities for them to study their programs. And it's important to mention that these countries uh, uh, all don't uh, use English as their medium of instruction, so they use their respective uh, major languages. So when someone is selected for one of the scholarships, they have to spend some months and sometimes even years uh, studying uh, uh, the languages of these countries before they start their program proper. On this link, uh, you find uh, information about the scholarship. The link is not always reliable, so if you try the link and it doesn't work, you can just Google bilateral education agreement and you'll find a lot of information. I've already opened the link, so I'll share it with you uh, so that you can see something there. Um, what is it? Yeah, I have it here. Uh, Share yeah. I hope you are seeing the screen now. It's where um, all everything that I told you is here. With even more, you see that uh, these are the countries that offer bilateral education agreement scholarships to Nigerians. You see all the countries I mentioned, plus some other countries. So I didn't mention the other countries because they are not European countries and the focus of our today's discussion is uh, European countries. So yeah, you see, you see all of them here. Eligibility criteria, everything is there, fields of study. Uh, yeah, you see fields of study are uh, diverse. Then um, selection process, yeah, everything is here. So at your convenience, go to this, uh, uh, follow this link or Google uh, and then uh, find the information and see what you can do with it. So I go back to the main slide. Yeah, so that is it about bilateral education agreement. The second category are the scholarships offered by the European Union and administered by various uh, consortia. Um, yeah. These scholarships are also called Erasmus Mundus scholarships and they are um, available for special programs or for special MSc programs called Erasmus Mundus Joint Master Degrees. All the information you need can be found on this link. These uh, MSc programs are jointly organized and delivered by international consortia of higher education institutions in different European countries. So every program uh, is organized by more than two universities in more than two uh, different European countries. And um, uh, a recipient of one of the scholarships does their MSc program in at least two countries, in at least two universities, in at least two different countries. So um, I, I have already opened the link. I'll take you there to see what is there. Uh, yeah. Yes, I think you have seen the, the page now. So yeah, this is it. All the information I told you is there plus more. Uh, the duration of the MSc which of this MSc program is two years. Actually, uh, in most European countries, MSc is for two years. It's only the United Kingdom that I know uh, offers MSc programs for one year. To other countries, what I know is MSc program is for two years. Conditions, everything is here. How to apply and the list of the MSc programs is here. Uh, so I already have it open. I will show it to you. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, you see there are a lot of uh, programs. So each of these programs is like a project. It runs for years, uh, like five years, and then it might be renewed or phased out. So if, whenever you check, you might find different uh, programs because uh, some are remote, some are added. 
it's uh, a lot of uh, programs in different fields uh, and if you are interested in them me just uh, click on the link and it will take you to the official website of that program and you find all the information you need uh, one of these programs is in my field of study european master in animal breeding and genetics where is it uh, i'll just take you there to show you as an example EMEPG. Uh, where is it? Yeah, it's here. Uh, if you click on the link, it will open. I've already uh, opened it, so I will, uh, I will show it to you as an example. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. If you come, you will find all the information about the program, application information, students, partners, partners, everything. Um, if you want to make inquiry, contact. And the story is the same for all other programs. If you go to the website, you will find this information. So for EMABG, it's organized by six universities in six different countries. A university in Göttingen in Germany, I can't pronounce the name, it's in German. Uh, my university, Wageningen University in the Netherlands. Uh, a university in Vienna, Austria. It's called Boku, but it's in uh, uh, German. I, I don't know the full meaning. And then uh, it's a university in Sweden, Swedish University of, uh, of Agricultural Sciences in Uppsala, Sweden. Then uh, Norwegian University of Life Sciences in uh, as in Norway, uh, yeah, and then Agro Paris Tech, which is in France. So if you are offered, uh, uh, if you are offered admission and scholarship to study this uh, program, you spend your first year in one of these universities and the second year in another uh, uh, university. So you have to. Uh, studying at least two of these universities in two different countries. The study is the same for all other programs. So yeah, take your time, uh, just find some time and go through the link and see what is there and see if there's something for you. Um, I'll go back to the main slides. Uh, yeah. So, the third category of the scholarships available for Nigerians in European countries is uh, uh, the scholarships offered and administered directly by the individual European countries. So we are countries like the Netherlands, Belgium, Sweden, Norway, and Switzerland. And yeah, a lot of others uh, offer their scholarships to uh, students from developing countries and they administer the scholarships by themselves. So the developing countries are not directly involved. And um, these uh, courses are available as short courses. So short training courses ranging from one, from one week to six months in duration, MSc programs for two years and PhD programs. And most of the PhD programs in European countries are for four years. And um, yeah, like I said, Nigerian government or any other developing country uh, is not directly involved. But before, uh, if, before one of these European countries offers their scholarship to students from any developing country, they have to have uh, like good uh, understanding with the country. But then that is just it. Uh, and then the selection process is uh, conducted by the European country itself, the developing country does not get involved. Everything is online from the application until you are awarded the scholarship. Everything is online. You don't need to uh, uh, go somewhere and uh, have interview or even phone call is not needed. You just apply online, exchange emails when necessary. So this is good. Um, I'll give you an example of the Dutch government scholarship. Uh, for yeah, uh, it's uh, you can just Google like uh, German government scholarship for Nigerians, also Swedish government scholarship for Nigerians, and then you'll find all you need. So because I'm in the Netherlands, and I've 
enjoyed one of uh, detachment scholarships. I'm going to just uh, show you something about it. So the Dutch government actually has a lot of scholarships for students from developing countries. And unfortunately, the only one that is uh, uh, available for Nigerians, the only one Nigerians are able to apply for is what is known as Orange Knowledge Scholarship, or KP. Uh, if we go to this link, you'll find uh, a lot of information about it. But before then, uh, the uh, scholarship is available only for short courses and MSc. Unfortunately, it's not available for PhD. Um, but its predecessor, which uh, was known as uh, Netherlands Scholarship Program, was available for PhD. And actually, the Netherlands Scholarship Program was uh, what I enjoyed when I did my MSc at Falkening University. So uh, uh, it's the scholarship that enabled me to do my MSc here. Um, I think it's it it stopped. Uh, uh, it was uh, stopped in two thousand and seven, and then from then, uh, Orange Knowledge Scholarship was uh, introduced as its replacement with some modification. So these scholarships are like projects; they run for a number of years, and then when they finish, they are either renewed uh, the way they were, or uh, a little bit modified and sometimes even renamed, depending on uh, what the country says, uh, what the country once so yeah uh, um, um well the way it works is that uh, you identify the courses you want to undertake and the universities that offer them and then you apply for admission and scholarship at the same time uh you on the website you will find the list of eligible courses and the universities that offer them so not all courses in all universities are eligible but most are oc and then, yeah, uh, if, for example, you have no idea which university offers the course you want to take, and maybe you don't know about these links, you can just Google. Google does everything for you. So, for example, you can Google for uh, MSc courses in animal breeding in the Netherlands, or MSc courses in animal breeding and animal breeding in Norway. Yeah, or MSc courses in uh, any other field, MSc courses in uh, petroleum chemistry, for example, in the United Kingdom, and you will find a lot of information on that. Um, yeah, so uh, I take you to the uh, homepage of Orange Knowledge uh, program. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you are seeing it now. So if you come, you will see all the information I told you and even more about the scholarship, available courses. So here you will find uh, the courses that are eligible for the scholarship and universities that offer them, how to apply. And yeah, you, you even have all the information in form of a PDF file. So if you want to like save them so that you can refer to them later without having to use your data to look for them again, they're here. The deadlines are here, selection process is here. So yeah, just uh, uh, find time and come and have a look. Maybe you will find something uh, uh, that suits you and that you're eligible for. Uh, yeah, and you can just Google this same for the scholarship in other countries. So I go back to the main slide. Uh, yeah. So the last but not the least category of scholarships offered by, uh, uh, available in European countries for Nigerians are those scholarships offered and administered by the universities themselves. So yeah, some European universities have their own internal scholarship uh, programs that are available for students from developing countries. Uh, I will give an example with my own university, but uh, it's something with, uh, with many European universities. So if, for example, you have an idea of the university you want to study, and maybe you've even identified the course you want to study, 
and you, yeah, you can just to go to the website of the university and look very well. So did your website, I'm sure you you'll find uh, a hyperlink that takes you to the available scholarships. So uh, I show you what uh, is available in my university. I've already opened the link, so I share it with you. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. So yeah, this is the website of my university and this is the page with all the available scholarships in the university for, of course, for students from developing countries. So yeah, um, they've even categorized the scholarships into those scholarships that are offered to selected candidates. You don't have to apply for them as long as you apply for admission and they're eligible, they will consider you. Then there are the scholarships that you have to apply for by yourself. And then there are plus scholarships that are like agreements between the university and those countries. So those countries uh, pay the university to like just administer these scholarships to the students from those countries. In any case, uh, yeah, so uh, the scholarships I want to show you are the internal scholarships of the university. I know about this one, the unfunded Fund scholarship fund is for is by the university. It's an internal thing, and it's for students from developing countries. The excellence uh, program, it's for yeah, it's uh, like the most prestigious scholarship available in the university because it's for excellent MSc students. If you apply and then your your profile is special, they offer it to you. And for example, if you want to study, but you don't have, you couldn't find a full scholarship and they see potentials in you, they can uh, give you some tuition fee waiver. So you don't pay the tuition fee, but you have to take care of yourself living expenses. And they have a special scholarship program for African students. So each of these scholarships, if you expand, you'll see the details. So yeah, at your convenience, come and have a look. And yeah, you can do the same for other universities. Uh, yeah, this is what I want to show you here. So I'll go back to the main slides. Um, uh, yeah, so I've been thinking about uh, scholarship uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, scholarships and admission uh, processes, but I've not talked about the uh, requirements. Usually the requirements for scholarship and admission are very similar because in most cases you make the application together. So of course, uh, well, these requirements vary depending on what you want to study. So the requirements for bachelor's degree are different from master's degree and those of master's degree are from, uh, different from those of PhD. But I think the most popular scholarship, uh, uh, the most popular scholarship are the ones for master's degree and most I think most Nigerians go to study, uh, yeah, they go abroad for their MSc. And, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to concentrate on MSc. You can extrapolate for PhD, and of course, you can go to the websites of the individual uh, courses and scholarships to find the exact requirements. So these are like general. Uh, of course, if you want to study MSc, you have to have a bachelor's degree. And usually in Europe, they insist that you have to have at least a, a second class of a division degree. And of course, you need to prove that with a certificate and transcript of academic transcript of academic records. So you need to supply this. You also need to have a passport. I mean, inter international passport here, because that is what the universities and the scholarship providers will use. because that is what the universities and the scholarship providers will use to identify you. Um, you also need to prove that you speak English very well. These programs are offered in English. So yeah, you need to be proficient in English. Well, usually for Nigerians, this is not a big deal because English is our medium of uh, instruction. It's our official language. And like I said earlier, these continental European countries also, uh, they are not, they are non-native English speakers. So yeah, usually Nigerians speak at least as good as uh, the nationals of these countries, sometimes even better. So in most cases, they accept uh, 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 a document from your university that states that you, the, the 
the course you took so like the the, the courses uh, and the exams that led to the award of your degree were all in english so it this document is called medium of confirmation of instruction confirmation of medium of instruction and there are many nigerian universities uh, offer this document to their students just the way this transcript is offered the application process the application process for this document is very similar to the application process for transcript in some in some cases they insist that you have to take uh, english language proficiency exam yeah if that's the case then you have to do it but like i said in most cases this document suffices um, you also need a CV, or well, a CV summarizes everything about you, your educational background, your uh, working experience, as the case may be, and yeah, your special skills. And then you also need a letter of motivation. Letter of motivation is like your application letter. It's also called statement of purpose. Uh, yeah, it's uh, in this document that you tell the universities and the scholarship providers why they need to admit you and offer you the scholarship. So, uh, what you want to, why, why you need to study the course, and if you study the course, what skills are you going to acquire, and how are those skills going to be uh, useful for your future career, and stuff like that. This is a very important document because it's mainly what distinguishes you from uh, other candidates, and this is. Uh, this is supposed to be uh, specific for every applicant. So you need to take some time, uh, you need to spend some time preparing this uh, document. In some cases, they require a statement from an employer. So some of the scholarships are called scholarships for development and they are uh, targeted at uh, uh, mid career professionals. So people who have already started working in uh, a sector in their countries. And then they go and further their education and they are expected to go back to their countries and uh, uh, make use of the knowledge they acquire. So in some cases, they say you have to have uh, an employer statement, uh, a document from your employer that says uh, uh, they are aware that you are applying for this program and this program is uh, important for your career. If you uh, acquire the knowledge and skills, if you come back, this is how it's going to be useful for your career in the institution and stuff like that. Um, we usually do overlook this because uh, I know a lot of people who get these kinds of scholarship without the uh, letter of motivation. So uh, that's why I didn't include it here. It's not like, uh, it's not always needed, but in some cases it's needed as the case, maybe you will uh, find the information on the scholarship websites. Uh, now I conclude. I need to tell you that the scholarships are very competitive. They are uh, to be competed for by candidates from all over the world. So it's they're usually offered to the best of the best. So you really need to work hard in order to succeed. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, perseverance. You need to apply. Sometimes you need to apply multiple times. So uh, yeah for a number of years before you get one. And usually the best thing is to like apply for several scholarships. Don't just uh, put all your eggs in one, one basket. So you apply for uh, uh, all the ones that you're eligible to apply for and you don't know the one that you're going to succeed in. So you really need to uh, 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 spread your chances and uh, repeat some of the application, some of you, you repeat the applications for some of the scholarship several times before accepting. It's not easy, but if you put in your best, you uh, you uh, you can get it. Uh, another thing is that um, this is a bitter truth. This is something I'm not proud to see. Unfortunately, we in the north are left behind in this kind of uh, struggle because we are used to getting things uh, in the easy way. Uh, if you check, for example, on the website of bilateral education agreement, if you see the name of our days, you see that most of them are from the South. And when you attend the interviews for some of the scholarships, you realize that most of the candidates are from the South, only a few Northerners. And if you interact with them, you realize that the Southerners are more prepared than the Northerners. If we want to talk of, if you come to scholarships like the uh, European Union scholarships for the joint master programs, 
uh, those ones we are really really behind we really need to uh, wake up they are competitive and usually there's uh, due process and fairness but of course you have to apply you have to uh, submit a very good case for you to succeed so if if we don't uh, put in our best definitely we'll be able to compete with others so yeah um, I have uh, a lot of such experiences where some people from you know ask me to guide them and I start guiding them but as soon as they realize that they have to do a lot they give up I have also had similar experiences with southerners and most of the southerners that I guide they they like they put in their best they also don't not all of them succeed but at least these uh, success rate is higher with the southerners than with the northerners so we need to work up and take uh, make use of these opportunities yeah it's it's not that uh, these people are smarter than us or anything we are just smart as uh, smart as any people it's just our attitude we need to like uh, change our attitudes and really work hard for these things and if we do that we will succeed um yeah things are easy this is just because uh, uh, of course like i have uh, already indicated there are a lot of scholarships available and maybe this search could be difficult well it's good to search by also but you can also uh, register with some websites that will be updating you with uh, the available uh, scholarships uh, from time to time so uh, when it, when when the application for a scholarship is about to open they will inform you about it and then they will give you all the information you need the eligibility criteria the uh, universities in which uh, uh, you can use the scholarship and all the information you need they will even give you some links to uh, uh, other pages that have relevant information for you there are a lot of them you can just for example google scholarship updating websites and you'll find all of them this one is uh, called scholarships for development i like it a lot because i used it a lot when i was searching for scholarship they uh, they send you emails two times a week with summary of all the available scholarships uh, within that period uh, so i've already opened it i will take you to show you how the uh, the page looks like um, yeah so yeah, if you follow the link it will bring you here uh, yeah so detail the advantages or benefits of registering with them they send you two emails per week you won't, you won't miss any scholarship again uh, yeah then you uh, you need to subscribe and you, you register with your email you put in your email here uh, and then you click here send updates and then they'll send you an email you go to your inbox or spam to uh, view it and then there will be a subscription link or activation link and when you click on it then this your subscription is activated and then you start receiving the emails and then it's left to you to go to the emails and uh, yeah see what you can do with them um, yeah i think uh, i've come to the end of the presentation yeah this is what i wanted to see and then i Wish you all the best in your search. Thank you very much.